right. Yeah. Let's get there now. The Federal Special Anti Robbery Squad, called FSARS, will no longer be controlled from Abuja. The, the Acting Inspector General of Police has disbanded the unit and ordered state police commissioners to command the squads in their locations. Mohamed Adamu also scrapped two other police squads and created a special election investigation team. Sifon Asien has the story. Less than a month to the start of the elections, the police continue to develop strategies for smooth polls. As with previous elections, providing a secure environment for the conduct of the polls remains a daunting task. At this inaugural meeting with senior officers, the acting inspector general of police acknowledges the enormity of the task. During the handing and taking over ceremony held last week, you will recall that I emphasized in my speech that the presidential and national assembly elections scheduled for 16th of February 2019 and the governor chief, state assembly, and federal capital territory area council elections slated for Saturday, 2nd March 2019, are national engagements that will not only tax us, but subject our professionalism and commitment to duty, to national and international scrutiny. The credibility of any election is determined not just by the legal framework regulating it and the conduct of the actors within the process, but by the extent of professionalism and operational competence displaced by the police. Undertaking the task, the police chief sets out by decentralizing the special anti-robbery squad, SARS. While this initiative is being perfected, the operation of the special anti-robbery squad, which is currently centralized at the first headquarters, is hereby decentralized. He also scraps special units such as the Special Tactical Squad. All quasi investigation and operation units, including Special Investigation Panel, Special Tactical Squad, or any other such teams under whatever name are hereby disbanded. <laughs> The DRG for CID is to overtake and review all cases that such teams are currently handling as well as official assets on charge to them and submit in detail and submit a detailed report to my office within two weeks. The police are also devising ways of working with the electoral umpire INEC in ensuring the elections are hitch free. Sifon Asian, TVC News, Abuja. Right, uh, that report there uh, leads us into our discussion. We have in the studio the CEO, Aliens Media and Convener, Issues with SARS, Shagun Awusonya. Good morning and uh, good to have you. Good morning. On the good show. morning, Shagun. Nice to see you. You All too. right. Yeah. Uh, well, you do have a smile on your face. Uh, I wonder if <laughs> uh, you know if it's because of this uh, latest development where the 20th IG, uh, Muhammad Adamu, has uh, you know disbanded uh, the SARS. Um, when the former IG was there, Ibrahim Idris, uh, he did come up with uh, some reforms as far as the FSAS was concerned, but we didn't uh, see much uh, change, positive or otherwise, you know, from that particular um, uh, directive. Uh, how confident are you that this latest move by the new um, IG acting will give us the results we're looking for? Already we can tell that the current action or the current pronouncement or order given by the IG will not yield any um, fruitful uh, result for Why the Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And Why the reason that? being that I don't think there is an understanding of what has been done in the past two years as far as SARS is concerned or the police generally is concerned. I would believe that if there is a problem, you know, when we define something as a problem, we are telling ourselves that there must be a solution somewhere. If your problem doesn't have a solution, then it's probably not a problem. And if that is if you really want to solve the problem. And from the way they, these things are, it shows that there's lack of understanding, lack of, lack of connection. There's a huge gap which has been widened by this kind of order without properly investigating what has been done prior to the time of your assumption of office. As much as we, are, we have our reservation about the past um, IG, IGP Idris, he cooperated 
with all the efforts of the CF CSOs and stakeholders within the uh, dialogue of the police reforms and SARS uh, overhaul. But don't and you think, having been, sorry to break you, Abin, having been in the system, you cannot say that Mohammed Adamu, the new IG, does not understand uh, the workings or the, or the challenges that have been within the FSAS uh, thus far. The, pronounce, the pronouncement or the order given doesn't show understanding. It doesn't show that he understands the sacrifices or the cost of his pronouncement. Because if you understand the cost of his pronouncement, he will not say he has disbanded SARS when in actual fact he only moved them under the Commissioner of Police. The Commissioner of Police are already troubled. The Commissioner of Police are already overwhelmed. The Commissioner of Police are already losing grasp and, and grip on their men on the street. As we speak, remember, when SARS was taken off the street, the news we're hearing was about police impunity. They took over from where, from the, from the, from the fact that they could not reach, use the SARS anymore to perpetrate this evil. Police started doing this. And when you accost these people, when you investigate these cases, they will tell you that they are acting on the orders of their commissioners of police. In this country, there are commissioners of police who keep political prisoners. In this country, we have commissioners of police who cannot control their DPOs and area commanders. So how do you now, you know, arm these people with SARS? without actually consulting All to right. know the problem that we have been if, to if we have to look, because I remember you were one of the strong advocates against uh, what SARS was doing at the time. Exactly. I, uh, no one can forget uh, NSARS, the hashtag NSARS, N -SARS. N -SARS. Mm. in a hurry. Now, if we have to get into the crux of this issue, mm -hmm. because you are talking about, it's not about the disbandment, then this is all about what. And if we have to look at the, that what, what is what do you think is the process by which that would have been tackled? Okay, we we advocated for NSARS reform police NG. The mm. objective was to shut down the SARS and the impunity, mm. and then the end goal was to reform the police holistically. Now, what we did then, that brought about the F SARS, was that we created a protocol, a standard operational procedure that limits them to arm, distress calls pertaining to armed robbery and kidnapping. Mm. And then mandating them to wear uniform, mandating, mandating them to have uh, a protocol that makes them answerable to commissioner of SARS or uh, SARS commanders across the state and the commissioner of SARS in the central. And make them no. identifiable. And make them identifiable. Mm. Today, with this pronouncement already, we have already started seeing uh, chaos on our streets. As of yesterday, SARS have discarded their uniform, they are back on the street, harassing citizens in Akure, in Ibadan, in Rivers, across, across, across the states. And already chaos is already looming. Less this is just less than 24 hours. hours. So it shows that this order doesn't have any um, police is yet to be self-aware yeah, or mindful. But, but we have to put it, we, because when you give out information, we have to be very sure. Ha, have, they, have you um, um, verified because when you say you've seen chaos this chaos we are, in, in we some get places, have you verified that get they are carried out by or perpetrated by, by yes, SARS? Yes, yes. There are video evidences to this. There are, there are documentary evidences and, you know, there are reports on this. Because for the past one month, anyway, the public complaints, rapid response units have been down. They've been down. So people don't even have a place to report to. So we are back to getting hundreds of calls on a daily basis. So in other words, there's been a vacuum created by this directive. Is that, yes, is that why? Yes, there's a vacuum. There's lack of understanding of what to do, and everybody feels they can do anything they like now because they are now back under the Commissioner of Police who operates chop by chop. So now, now that you say that, you know, there's a tendency that the CPs, the Commissioners of Police, would be even burdened more with what they already have to, to you know, tackle with this new assignment handed over to them. Uh, what 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 then? It, it seems like there's no uh, solution to the problem, the basket case that is well, F like SARS, I said, as far as you're concerned. Like I said, anything you identify as a problem mm -hmm. shows that there's a solution somewhere. What if are we the, dialogue, and we mm -hmm. that dialogue started from yesterday because we've been receiving calls from the PRO's office, we've been receiving calls from different sec um, by part of uh, governance. What that, are they saying? Uh, they're saying that we need to have a dialogue on this, we need to look at, into this holistically, we need to find a way forward to this because they realize that this is a blunder already. Should the dialogue have happened before coming up with Definitely this? Definitely. The, the, the dialogue should have happened before coming up with this. This is not a military regime. And police can uh, demonstrably are suffering from the vestiges of the military interrogation. 
because from there we can see that they, they came out like this is a military junta and the police IG is like a uh, president or a governor of his own who can just dish out orders and damn the consequences. And that is not supposed to be. Police cannot function without the people. Mm -hmm. Police cannot function without the society. And police cannot function without dialoguing with the stakeholders, especially on matters that are very critical. People who have died based on police impunity are yet to get justice. People who have been who have had losses, who have there are many cases in the National Human Rights Commission that have not been resolved, and then you mm -hmm. come out to say you have disbanded SARS. And again, the, the the lack of integrity of the of the broadcast of the of the of the statement of the of the terms used is also very confusing. How can you say you have disbanded SARS when SARS are still existing and even more potentially dangerous, you know, to the people? All Under right, the commission of so police. Let, let's 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 not um, let's not paint. A one-sided picture here. We've heard a lot of people say that, in as much as SARS or F SARS, as they existed and maybe are still existing, have uh, maybe stepped beyond their bounds sometimes to be high-handed. SARS is not totally a bad situation. Uh, have you recorded, apart from some of the high-handedness, apart from the abuse sometimes, apart from the impunity, yeah. have you recorded areas where? Without SARS, it would have been more challenging to handle mm -hmm. some cases of kidnapping and, and robbery and, and robbery. all of that. You know, every time we, I come here to speak and yeah. every time I put out tweets, I always recognize the fact that there is a proper purpose for which SARS was created. Mm. And as we grow as society, because society is more like a living organism by itself, mm -hmm. as we grow, we need to modify these things, how they operate within you know, the system by a, a changing the standard operational procedure to suit the community to mm. suit the, the environment, to suit the reality mm. on ground. Yeah. And do you know that by the period where these protocols were put in place, you did not hear a lot of noise about SARS oppression or impunity or so. Mm. So we need to investigate what was done within that period, and which is what we're saying, that if we had had this dialogue before this pronouncement, there wouldn't have been all hell breaking loose. Can, because we can are, one really um, separate the challenge or the problem of SARS from the overall problem of the police? Because it seems that the problem that we see with SARS is a reflection of the general, uh, you know, uh, seeming malaise within the police force. And the new IG has said, uh, though he's in acting capacity, of course, uh, you know, that he's going to bring back professionalism into the police, you know, make sure that the police, mm. uh, civil uh, relationship, you know, relations is in, uh, you know, the, uh, according to global uh, standards and all of that. Don't, don't you think it would be unfair not to give him, uh, you know, time uh, to actually carry out some of the reforms that he's looking at carrying out. You see, the thing is, when you want to do something, you don't create more problems and start solving the problem you created instead of actually dealing with something, just to show that you have activities around you. That's what we're trying to say. You don't need to worsen the situation for the people. You don't need to. You need to count the cost of whatever it is that you're dishing out because there are people at the receiving end, which is why before you do anything, you need to, you know, we're bridging the gap between the people and the institution here. And then you cannot continue to do things that's, that breaks that bridge and then kick us back to square one. And that's what we're, t we're talking about. You can actually separate the difference between the SARS, the SARS problem, and the general police problem in a way. Because the SARS, they are not trained to engage in, with civility. They are trained mm. like they are militants. They are trained to be aggressively, you know, uh, to engage aggressively. Yeah, but members mm -hmm. of, of, of F SARS or SARS, were they not police they officers first, police. first before mm -hmm. the special assignment in SARS or, or, or F SARS, as the case may Most be? Most definitely, mm -hmm. but that training doesn't get out of you. Remember when we put on that, put, uh, put, uh, bro, bro, executed that protocol that created the F SARS, you know, that centralized the whole, whole thing? We're saying that there are some things that need to go on, like the trainings, like the uh, uh, post-traumatic stress treatments, and so many, so many other things. We heard the case of a SARS officer known to be of good conduct and all, who opened fire on the last month official. You understand? We have not investigated why that is so. You know, there are so many things that we're dealing with here. Then to push them back into society and have them back roaming our streets with their casual ways and, and, and rag tags, then there's, a, there's going to be a, so a towards election, mm, for that matter. Mm. Is what, it very, what's very the way forward? Now, how do we come out of this uh, seeming uh, cul-de-sac? Because it looks like any, uh, uh, you know, solutions that is being brought to bear, it's just not uh, working, at least not in your view. Well, from today, we're going to start having dialogue. By this afternoon or so, we'll be meeting with the IG of police and the, okay. at the police force headquarters.
to go through what has been done, to see where we're coming from, to see where we are, and to see where we hope to be, mm -hmm. in line with the vision that he has for the police. Uh, we, are, we are measured. We have measured optimism and trust that his pedigree and the pedigree of his uh, first PRO you know, speaks for themselves. And mm -hmm. then we can begin to find ways in which we can mitigate the gaps and then come back to ensure that the policies that will be dished out or the orders that will be dished out will be favorable to the people and also favorable to the office. What are some of the elements that you're bringing to bear for this new um, FSAS or even the, the police in general to, you know, be better? For the FSAS, position? we are yet to, you know, play our own role. The SARS have been able to behave themselves. They've mm. been able to hem themselves in. They've been able to listen to, the, uh, to reason, you know, for the period, for, for a while now. So we are supposed to meet up with them where, from where they are by putting them, giving them the right trainings, by giving them the right intervention programs, you know, that will make them engage professionally when they, when they come out. And they don't really need to be either centralized or decentralized. They are a special unit, for God's sake. So they, it doesn't matter whether you're talking about federal or, or state. In as much as they have uh, state entities that they are answerable to, we don't necessarily have to burden the commissioner of police about this. There's nothing political about you know, but don't you think that structure in itself is a reason? Is part of a is a major reason why you have this situation with we don't SARS have a problem. and over centralized uh, structure, just as it, it affects every other aspect of our society, you know, of uh, our national life. If we're going to decentralize police holistically, mm -hmm. we need to think of restructuring Nigeria. I start from there, so that yeah, we don't. But, but isn't but this part of it? Because the yeah. point there is, one polit one elder statesman was saying at the time that. We cannot put Nigeria on a platform and begin to break it, break it down in the name of uh, 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 restructuring at the same time. This, this thing, sector by piecemeal. sector, bit by bit, yeah. and all of that. W wouldn't you see maybe this is part of Wait. an aspect of uh, that restructuring? No, it is not an aspect. Because okay. for everything you do, mm. there must be mindfulness. Right. For everything you do, there must be the understanding of neuroscience. There must be understanding of emotional intelligence. You don't just do it because it was written in a book. You do it because it, it works. You do it because it brings about better. You do it because it changes life. You do it because it's a win-win situation both for your men and also for the people that will receive their services. Police is not a force. It is a service. And the feedbacks are very key. So that is why before you can bring in anything in form of change, you need to think of who, is, are going, who the people that are going to receive it. Think of restructure as you changing you know, the, the operational procedure of a factory. If it produces candle, you can't just change the staff and expect it to produce something else. You have to change the modular arrangement of the equipment that are inside that factory. Mm. So the modular arrangement has to do with legislation. Reform begins with the police, uh, the new police act bill, and the new police act bill is still uh, facing perfection at the national assembly. That's the beginning of reform for us. All the other things that we've been doing, like I said before, is moving furniture around, which is like just preparing mm. for the law to come in to kick in, so that we can know how to engage and change protocols. So mm. all the stall gaps that have been working, we don't re necessarily need to uproot it, you know, and then start afresh. Because that's what it seems like. There's well, no in the meantime, the, the, the IG has asked uh, the CPs to evaluate their units and submit their report to him in, in two weeks. And I wonder whether two weeks really would be uh, enough for the CPs to do, do this evaluation and submit to the, uh, to the IG. Especially when we have elections yeah. coming. Exactly. That's one thing. And secondly, there are petition, pending peti petition on the table of the IG, which you must have inherited from the past, on that indicts or indicted the commissioner of police. Most of the commissioner of police in Nigeria, especially in the major cities, you know, up on several things. And we, our letters at that time stipulated that they all need to be reshuffled. But I say, well, it seems like some people have exclusive right to Lagos, and they cannot leave Lagos or function anywhere else. And because of that, crimes will continue to be perpetrated by people in power. I don't yeah, understand what you mean by that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because well, when, you're, when you're mentioning mm -hmm. Lagos, in the eyes of the public, the, the, for instance, the commission of police in Lagos has been doing wonderfully well in the eyes of everyone. Not in the eyes of everyone. Oh, okay. Please. Not okay. in the eyes of everyone. There are so many things that we see internally that is defective. Okay. For example, when you engage police officers on the road who are you know, uh, uh, carrying out activities that are unlawful, they tell you they're under the orders of the Commissioner of Police that that's what they have been told to do. But do you take you know? that to the bank just because of... Yes, because we have been able to establish that it is actually true. And this, these petitions are on the table of the IG. So for the IG to empower such impunity is also a, a matter of concern. Yeah, so, so which it, is one of the reasons why we need you, to visit if you, this. If you are able to identify that, for instance, moving the commission of police or deployment, is that the solution to it? 
It is part of the solution. Okay. Because if something doesn't fit, that's why we remove cancer. If something has become cancerous to a system, you remove it, you cut it out. So that the, it doesn't affect other things. It's not just one commission of police. There are several commission of police, you know, in Nigeria that are not functional, that are not no, no longer there. You know, they are not there in mind, in person, they are not mindful anymore. And so because of that, we are not getting the kind of service that we ought to get. Yeah, but don't you think the, the, the problem with the Nigeria police is what, you know, uh, shows up every every other part of this country where the real problem is environmental because the same police officers that you talk about when they go out of the shores of this country they perform excellently well make Nigeria look good only to come back and it's like well the environment just is stifling it doesn't allow you to give the best of all the training all the investment you know that has been put in in those people I think it's about institutional gaps because when wow. you talk about the environment when you have a society that is wiser we have a society that is more enlightened than the police that is the, the police structure that is supposed to, you know, hold it accountable, then there's going to be a problem. We're going to be seeing our policemen, you know, not being capable to handle the things, the matters of state. So because of that, there will be a problem. And the moment you challenge a policeman, you have already disrespected authority. Abuse mm. starts from there. So that's why we're saying it's not just environmental, it's about legislation. It's also about structure. If you have all this structure in place, if our law mirrors society, we're not going to be having this problems that we're having here. All right. Uh, the, you, you mentioned earlier on that uh, the police is meant to be a service and not, not, and not a, a force. force. Now, when it comes to understanding that service, it, it boils down to the philosophy behind this, the, 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 the police. The policing itself. The spirit of it, not just the activity of it, or mm -hmm. not just the uniform, but the spirit of that service. Do you think that is really understood by Nigerians on mm -hmm. one hand, and then the police officers on the other, because there's, it's an engagement. Yes. For the past decade now, we've been enlightening the people, we've been educating the people on their rights and several other things in society so that they can be able to contribute to society and be able to know what to demand from their leaders in terms of accountability and transparency. Um, as regards what you asked, normally the police that we practice, the policing that we practice in Nigeria is still based on the constabulary which means that they see themselves as protecting mm. the, go the, the government from mm. the people. So they are not seeing it as a service to the people. They are not doing anybody any service. There are a law and order out there to protect the system from the people. So that's why you see police turn their guns on protesters that are not armed. That's why you see a lot of things, people abusing other people because they are in uniform and you are not. So that's why you see people, seeing people who question their authority as though, you, how dare you do, say this to me? How dare you mm. ask me a question? enter motto or something like that. So because they don't see themselves as accountable to you. And these are vestiges, like I said, of the military interregnum. So we need to begin to have a conscious police system, structurally and legislatively, you know, that is mindful that they are out there to serve the people. And that is where the change starts. That's where the reform starts. And then it's not about increasing their salary. It's about increasing and it's about, it's about lowering the, the, the cost of living for them and mm -hmm. making them have what they call self-actualization, you know, within the system. An average policeman on the street does not have a future. And the, those ones who are promised the future, like the RRS and co, they behave well because they know that if I, may, I misbehave, I'll be thrown back into the shoddy waters of the Nigerian police system. But under this structure, my future is guaranteed. I can have my leave. I, my children can go to good school. I can pay my, my pension is secure. It's so there are layers. You know, so there are layers. It's actually interesting to hear from you that there's any aspect of the, the, uh, the system that actually believes that its future is, is secure. When you say that, what comes to mind is I wonder how many Nigerians actually feel that their future is secure. is secure and so it's uh, it's reflected in the police in the army in in most across every things, yeah. you know uh, across a uh, board but let's even come back to the issue of uh, you know uh, uh, the attempt by the IG to bring back professionalism he has actually said that the CPs will be held liable for any professional misconduct on the part of the uh, SAS or is it F SAS when it's finally brought to, you know within their their purview I wonder what your views are about that how from, much really can, from can research, the do? Yeah. From research, I believe that if you're going to embark on any project, any research, you need to count the cost. If you're going to write any project, you're going to look at the literature review, you know, mm. things that have been done in the past about that thing so that you don't reinvent the wheel or become inconsequential. So at the end of the day, whatever it is you're going to bring out will be in line with what has been done, and then you will show what you're adding to the body of knowledge. But from the approach that we're seeing, it doesn't show that we understand what has been done in the past. And I believe it meant well. The intent is good. The, 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 the demeanor behind the orders are 
wonderful. But we just need to straighten out a few things and then fill a few gaps and then begin to come back to the people and say, look, this is the actual meaning in execution. You know, there's something called commander's intent. When mm -hmm. an order is given, the captains who receive the order on the war field know how to interpret it to understand the essence of that law, of mm -hmm. that order, not just because of the, the way the order sounds. Is that the missing link? That's the missing link. I, th I think so. I think that's missing link. And again, you know, as a leader, you need to be very clear in your utterances because in the things that you say, in the orders that you give, so that people don't misconstrue what you're saying. Again, this is a, an election period. We don't want a situation where we see politicians arming themselves with SARS officials to intimidate and suppress voters. And that will happen with the police under the Commissioner of Police. That will happen, mm. especially if we have SARS operatives working with the Commissioner of Police. You cannot run away from it. All and right. the cost is going to be very great. So for that, I think we need to review the order. We need to look at it well. And then we need to come back to the people and give something that will stand the test of time. All right. Uh, the, the, the police is preparing to recruit or is about to recruit about 10,000 yeah. uh, police, new police officers or fresh police officers and over 300,000 Nigerians applied for it. Now, the new uh, acting, uh, acting IG has said that there's going to be room for about 30,000 uh, recruitment every mm -hmm. year for a period of time, at least to try to close the gap. Yeah. What should they, government, be looking at? Because when you are bringing new people, new Nigerians, from mm -hmm. the, main, the same system from the same into, the, into the police policing uh, uh, service or the policing, the business of policing, what should they be looking at? I think before all these things can happen, mm. police first must identify itself and the, its purpose within the structure of our polity. Without that, whosoever that you bring will just come and create their own hell, you know, within the hell that already exists. And that's one of the reasons why we're trying as much as possible to help the police find themselves in purpose in a democracy, mm. not act like a militant organization within the system. Right. So with that, with that is understood, the people coming into the police, they're not coming in because they don't have a job, any other job or opportunities out there. They're coming in because they want to come and serve. But now that the people who are within the system don't see themselves in service, you can imagine the kind of chaos that we are confronted with, with new entrants who see police as a means to wealth. And, and, and of course, it's not only the FSAs that's been disbanded. There's a whole lot of reform uh, that we're expecting within the police mobile force, that's the PMF, uh, counter-terrorism unit, and special protection unit to be reorganized. Now, how, how soon uh, do you think this should happen? I mean, if it's going to happen at all, and what do you think really should be in place for, for uh, you know, uh, because uh, the president, not too long ago, actually said that he was disappointed that the police was not at the forefront of the counterterrorism war, yeah. uh, for example, that's overburdening the Nigerian military. Yeah. How do we get back the police to actually uh, begin to lead the charge as far as counterterrorism is concerned? When the administration came in, mm. there were several intelligent people who have exposure you know, globally in sub-Saharan Africa, who understand what security is, who knows what the, uh, the, the, the essence of uh, counterterrorism and homeland security is all about. They came in, they offered their services for free, and they gave in architectures that could have worked in our present time. But it was jettisoned because they saw it as something that challenged the status quo and something that they, do, they are not ready for. Change is always very difficult to push. Mm. So they, they threw away that architecture, and that architecture will have worked. And I believe that for anything to change formidably, unsustainably, they need to revisit the architecture. They need to revisit people who have experience to offer. The, the Minister of Interior, for goodness sake, is mm. a professor. As far as he's a, he's a Harvard professor, somebody who is respected in sub-Saharan Africa when it comes to security and counterinsurgency matters. Mm. He knows all these things. He has all these things. He knows people. You know, he has the, the requisite you know, uh, no, no. discipline to make this thing happen. But will they allow them to work? That's the essence. Because when, sometimes when you, when you, you stand say, out... When you say, would they allow them to who work? Is, what I'm saying is, is sometimes, they? sometimes, sometimes, when you stand out to do mm. what you are created to do, mm. you, are, you are challenging status quo. And some people will see you as usurping the powers of, of president. Could one ask the same question as it affects the acting IG? Will he get the kind of cooperation that he actually needs? The kind needs? of support. It depends will he on get that support? He will get the support from? because for him, as the IG, he is actually servicing the people directly. Mm -hmm. So if the people say this is what they want, and he meets them where they are, mm -hmm. he is going to get the trust. Yeah, if the, the people trust. say that this is what they want, and he's willing, ready, yes. but is he able? He that's will be a, able that's because he already will he has... be able in terms of funding? The, the former IG talked about the trillions mm. 
uh, that will be needed to actually reform the police for you know for us to deliver on you know what is required from the police that didn't happen all he needs was political will if you are doing the will of the people you know globally there's no country that finances their police themselves they get subventions, they get in intervention funds from different places. And if you are doing the will of the people, you are going to get the support you need. Mm -hmm. All right. Shagun Awosonya, CEO Aliens Media and Convener Issues with SARS. Thank you so much for Thank coming. You Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Let's stay with the story we have been following all the while. FSARS, the disbandment of FSARS by the mm -hmm. Acting Inspector General of Police. Yeah. There's a lot of reaction from Nigerians already. We mm -hmm. just had the discussion on that. Well, let's get into uh, the streets now. Our reporter, Bosede Omoi, joins us now live from Ikeja, where uh, Lagosians are ready to talk about this. Abosede, uh, good morning. What are the people saying about the decentralization of FSAS from the federal to states? We're actually at um, Ojo Dubraja, border town between Lagos and uh, Ogun State, and uh, we're here to get reaction from Nigerians uh, about this matter. Already I have uh, a Lagosian here who would uh, speak to me about this matter and uh, whether or not he's even had experiences with them. Good morning and uh, thank you for joining us Good morning. Today. All right, so tell us um, what you think about the decentralization of SARS by the acting IGP. Well, let me first of all commend the acting IG for the good job he started. I wish him well. Um, my own view on that issue is that as he decentralized the SARS now, we want them to be in uniform. No mufti again, because not, not even when they are not wearing uniform, they are committing many atrocities in the streets. Even if there are some people, they, they will not believe that they are, they are police officers or something. Some people will want to attack them and say, where are you, before they show, their, they show up their guns. But if they be in uniform, if police come to you, you know that this is police, you explain yourself to them that what happened. But as they are doing before is a bad idea. But this new, this new IG, how it come with the decentralization of the SARS, is a good welcome to Nigeria. I, I personally, I want it because I'm the part of the people on the social media fighting for NSAS, NSAS, not even end it totally. They must operate, but they must operate with uniform. All right, all right. Thank that you very much. Thank you very much uh, for that view. Another Lagosian here uh, joins me to talk about uh, this same matter. Good morning, and thank you very much. Yeah, good morning. All right, so tell me your uh, experiences with SARS and uh, what you think about the decentralization of the federal SARS. Okay, for my own uh, understanding, because I have come in Kanta with them twice, once here in Lagos and in Patakot. So one of the activities I heard the most and sometimes when they go to you, maybe if there is no any cash with you, they will ask you to bring your ATM card. They will take you to ATM machine and make a kind of withdrawal from your account. I dislike that. And if there is any other way they can cut down their power from federal to state, so that the state commissioners will be checkmating some of their activities, it's going to be okay. Well, that's what the acting IG has done now. It's been decentralized, and now commissioners of police have authority over what they do in their location. I don't understand. I say what? It's been decentralized and commissioners of police in different states actually have authority over the activities of the SARS members. Okay, they have to do more. You understand me? Because the way they operate, I see that they are, power, they are still operating with a federal power. If, they, if the state commissioners have a kind of a authority, maybe to checkmate their, some of their activities, I feel some of their you know, evil activity is going to be is going to cut short. Well, thank you very much. Uh, another Lagosian, and I will just um, run over this. Good morning. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. All right. So tell us what you your view is about this decentralization of the federal uh, special anti robbery squad at this time. That they should come back here, go away. Oh, hey, oh, hey, well, for me, no, SAS well, SAS is good. It's good, but uh, but the way they operate, I don't like it because sometimes you know, they will. They barrack people in the street. Although if they are doing just the way the UK have the police have been working together, the way they are doing this, just the way they bring us some of police from the street, they are work together, they give information. They themselves they are good though, but there are some way that they are bad because you see people walking in the street, they see people walking in the street. Before you know they will 
They will call them, what's your phone? Check it their phone before you know Barab. Let's say they hold it there, they will arrest them. So, but because of those things that I'm seeing that the way they are work, the way they work, I didn't like them. So do you think the decentralization would help the process? Mm, for me, for me, the way they are, if they can change, they really, really want they really want to work with the government, they should they should buckle up so that they will, the way they are working so that the system can move forward. All right, then. thank you very much for your time. Well, hearing from the Goshans there at uh, Ojodu Bridge, I want to think about the decentralization of the special, uh, federal special anti robbery squad, FSARS. Mike Ngozi. All right, uh, Boss thank you, uh, Boss there on thank the streets you. of Lagos. You've heard it from Nigerians and the Goshen specifically mm. because uh, she was, you know, speaking from the beggar area of Lagos. Yes. A lot of people, the three people that she spoke with, they're all on, on the, the same, same page, page exactly. with those who are calling for, uh, if not necessarily ending SARS, mm -hmm. but at least, you know, reforming their activities, bringing back professionalism. Uh, and, uh, and besides all of that, the issue of impunity mm -hmm. is what they are kicking against. Exactly. And then when they operate, like the first person who spoke there was saying, mm -hmm. let them have uniforms. Uniforms. We just had the Shagun here now who, who reiterated the same thing. Exactly. So that you can identify these people mm -hmm. and then because... Anybody can wake up and do uh, when you when you know how yeah. the modus operandi operandi of 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 SAS, anybody can get themselves into some kind of you know and claim to and be claim and to claim be, to be, to be SAS. To be but SAS imagine if you, and you know, they that. actually wore their uniforms. The incidents of taking uh, well an alleged you know criminal mm. to the ATM machine to withdraw. <laughs> would be <laughs> <laughs> reduced to the We had that anyway. report, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's okay.